Hello, my lovelies. Elsie here to give you a reading for the new moon. It is a black moon. It is an eclipse moon. And that's a lot of things. I'm just saying. And I wasn't, I, I was, I was feeling some sort of way, you know, energy like. And then I went and did my own research. And what I realized is this is the moon of surprises and that it is in Taurus. So I've been feeling like something has been sneaking up on me for weeks. And now I get why. All right, so you're going to have to look for your signs, put your intuitive hat on. We've got the first card out for the collective. Here we go. Ooh, look at that. And it's not lost on me that it comes out sideways. So to me, that is your challenge, right? The challenge, it's going to be a challenging time for you, collective, because for some of you, you're about to take the plunge. Now, Coming out in a challenge is interesting because that means you're going to have to make some hard decisions. What I love about this deck is we have the Fool. You know, the Fool is um, where you begin, right? And I feel as though someone is taking the leap. This is an educated leap, though, understand. Whoever is taking this new beginning really understands, you know, the fullness of what's going on and they're going anyway. This person, however, isn't looking down below. They're just kind of dropping off the edge and going. So for some of you, you're going to go without the information. You're going to go on intuition. And for some of you, you've already figured it out and you're waiting on it. Could be Aries. Doesn't have to be. Okay, all on one card. That's how you're going to play it, Collective. <laughs> Burn me out the first reading, will you? Happy Thursday, by the way. I hope you are well. Thank you for clicking here. And if it is you who are my rider dies, thank you so much for clicking here again. And if you are new, I hope you will stay. All right. <laughs> we might as well just do sideways reading today. Here we go. I'm just going to say this high vibe and tribe. Thank you so much for all this energy. All right. What do we got here? We've got the Queen of Swords on the bottom of the deck. We've got another, another challenge here. And the challenge is the full moon energy. The challenge is this is a new start and this is a new start. This is a new cycle. Yeah, and only you have the key to open it, Collective. We have seven of moons, which means this is going to be the most emotional decision that you've ever made. But it is regarding your Nine of Cups. So in this deck, the Wandering Moon Tarot, which I purchased on Etsy, um, these uh, are cups. The moons are cups. And uh, when you see them, stars will be pentacles. So we have someone who is jumping off the edge, whether it's backwards or forwards. Um, whether you are taking an educated risk or just a leap of faith. Yep. Letting God grab you by the back of your pants. <laughs> and I hope it all works out. So we have the full moon. Here comes your, uh, yeah, here it comes, your, your new cycle. And um, the seven of moons is, it's not going to be an easy one. It's going to be really, really emotional. We go quickly from the seven to the nine of cups, though. So understand that. So that means this new start, whatever it is, um, this new start is, is something that has been making you feel very emotional. For some of you, maybe you're overly emotional. And no matter what your sign is, right? Um, you could be Aries. Yeah, you could be a water sign for sure. Could be Empress or Libra, right? You could, sorry, Taurus or Libra. We've got the world card. What? What? <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> Oh my goodness, seven of wands, yeah. All right, that's how we're going to go then. So I feel like, dear Empress, you are going to take the plunge, yeah? You're going, going to either take this educated leap of faith. Well, I call it an educated leap of faith, but I feel like when it's in the reverse, it's more of a leap of faith. Here, I think you kind of know what you're getting into, but you're willing to go for the ride. Yeah, I feel that. So we could have Taurus and Libra here. It doesn't have to be. I feel as though there is distance between you and the Emperor. I feel like there has to have, something here has to come to an end. It's between you and the Emperor. I feel like there is a chapter that is still, that is uh, about to close or has closed um, for um, 
either one of you or both of you. It's probably both of you. Yes. I feel like you took a leap of faith to open a new cycle and close an old one. And this, this emperor is looking for his nine of cups, is very emotional about it, very overly emotional about closing a chapter to start a new cycle, to get to you to take a new start. It reads both ways, y'all. That's mirrored energy. Yeah. That's what that is. That's what it feels like. Keep going here. Wow. Whew, that is big energy. Holy man. All right, so Empress, I think you know, uh, if you're Taurus, you know why you've been, you're sneak, someone's sneaking up on you here, or you've been feeling like it. We've got the Magician. Boy, lots of Major Arcana. Whoo! Lots of changes. Wow. The Magician is you. We have the Knight of Moons, which is love. I feel like you've been manifesting the emperor, dear empress. We, this is the mother and the father of the deck. There's no way that you shouldn't be together. Yeah. This is a match made in the stars. This is a match that was made before you came here. I feel like there is a cycle that has to end with the emperor first um, before love can fully bloom here. I feel... Empress, that you've been manifesting this love, you feel it around you, but you also know that the new cycle must start before you could move forward. I feel like you've already ended something here, and I think the Emperor has too. I think you both have. Because the Emperor is in love. I feel like the universe, the universe's hand is all in this. Whoever it is that you uh, that is your source, whether you say universe, God, Buddha, whoever it is, somebody's got their hand here and just like, yeah, I just saw like little pieces being moved around. No, this is what we'll do next. We'll go, we'll go this way. Yeah, this, this is, uh, of course, a big chapter that's ending for both of them. But there is a cycle, some sort of a cycle that this emperor needs to, um, needs to end before um, this love can kick off. Now, I feel like this is the energy that you feel um, sneaking up on you. If you're one of the people like me who feels like, yeah, it feels like weird in the universe here, in the energies. If you're a person who feels energy, you feel it. And if you do feel it, let me know. And if you could just let me know what some of your, um, what your sun, moon, and rising is, I'd love to know that too. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we have the two of moons. Yeah, two of cups. So the emperor is thinking about love. We have, um, yeah, we have the nine of cups and the emperor is in love. I feel like the empress has been waiting for the emperor, has been sitting and manifesting. I mean, not sitting, you know what I mean. You're not waiting and lamenting and all of that. Some of you might be, but I don't think the empress is into that. If you truly are the empress, you're doing your thing. You're doing your thing knowing that whatever is meant for you will never pass you by because you are connected to self. Yeah, you're connected to the self, the soul inside, and that soul is connected to the universe, which comes out in the magician. Hmm. Okay. So there is a cycle that needs to be closed by the emperor here. And I feel as though after that, that, um, after that cycle is closed, the Ten of Swords. Now, it's a painful cycle. It's a betrayal. Somebody has betrayed the emperor and he is moving that person out of his life. He can't go yet, but I feel like this is the energy that you feel. You feel the emperor's energy. You two are connected energetically. You are, and you're mirroring each other. You ended a cycle or, or you ended the chapter at the same time. You're, you both learned a karmic lesson of a karmic relationship. So dear Empress and Emperor, if this is your reading, you both have had come out of karmic relationships. And I do believe that this is a relationship that's deeply, deeply connected energetically. I feel like both of you are listening. Yeah through the crown chakra and I think that you're doing you're being doing what you're being guided to do mm. 
We've got the seven of pentacles and the three of pentacles. There's your ten pentacles. Come on. <laughs> Y'all, are you seeing this as I'm reading it? <laughs> Come on. Really? Y'all see me shuffling. Seven of stars and the three of stars. Yeah, th those are pentacles. And guess what that is? <laughs> It's a page of stars. It's a brand new start. Brand new start in love with the emperor. He's going to offer all nine cups. Yeah. The seven of pentacles, I feel, is uh, seeds of intention that were dropped by the empress. Seeds of intention dropped for the emperor so he could find his way back to her. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. That's beautiful. Wow. I want to know if this is your reading. If you can divulge the information, if you don't have to divulge yourself. Don't have to give us too many details, but I would really love to know if this is you. Seven of Pentacles tells me it's been a long wait for some of you. It could be so. Oh, come on. Okay, that's not even on camera, but I'm just going to push it in the way. There it is. <laughs> the Ten of Cups, really? <laughs> oh boy, someone's going to be happy, happy, happy by the end of this month. And it, it might be the Queen of water i feel because the queen of water showing up is being part of the empress and i feel that this has been a really emotional time for you dear empress you don't have to be a taurus and a libra in order to qualify to be the empress who is the empress she is all the queens right she is all the queen she's balanced in her energy she loves to take care of the home she whether she has bore children or not or is in childbearing years is is irrelevant she will mother anyone yeah she loves to be the person who provides you know loves to love on people. She is spiritual. She is a healer. She heals families. Uh, she heals people. Yeah, with her energy. And I feel that it's all right here at the ready. That's what's coming up in the future, right? Let's look at it here. So I feel like the Queen of um, the Queen of Cups here um, knows that there has been lying, and that's about to come to an end. Wow. Okay. Try to keep these decks in here. Okay. So the queen, yeah, the queen of moons is um, uh, the seven of, of, oh, seven of wands, um, defensive energy, right? Um, and she's feeling defensive. And I feel it's because there's, um, there's been something that's behind her and under the surface that she's not cool with. Because I first saw that as the seven of swords, but it's actually seven of wands. So I feel like um, I saw the seven of swords in my eye, in my third eye. So I feel like as though she's she's very defensive or was in de very defensive about her love energy and who she shared that with. I think that's coming to an end. And um, then we have uh, the queen of swords here. So perhaps for some of you, it came to an end because you did get a divorce or are planning on getting a divorce. Um, the Queen of Swords is the person who is the divorcee, but it is just an energy. So you could be someone who is just willing to um, to put on your Queen of Swords pants and, and toughen up and tell everybody what you think. So you're no longer going to smooth things over or make it feel digestible for everyone else. You're going to say what you think. Try not to hurt people. But, you know, the Queen of, of Swords it has a lot of words. She's highly intelligent and she knows how to use her words in a poignant way. So she doesn't mean to hurt, but sometimes it comes off that way. It's a double-edged sword, though, y'all. I mean, you could be yelling at the Queen of Swords and throwing your swords at her as quick as she can throw them at you. So just saying, right? So the just we've got justice here. So this queen, I feel, gets justice here by speaking up. And her reward is the Wheel of Fortune. So dear Empress, yeah, the Wheel of Fortune is here for you. Let's uh, clarify just a little bit, why don't we? Hey, yeah, let's look at that. Uh, we got enough room. We do. We're good. Okay, so we're going to use the Everyday Witch to clarify with here. All right, so we have the Empress who's ready at any moment. Yeah, she's at the ready. She's good to go. She's just waiting on that Emperor who is um, cleaning up the last of whatever it was that he just wiggled out of. So I feel as though that somebody betrayed this emperor and although he can't leave right away he's gonna let you know somehow some way that um he has feelings for you tell me about this world card please tell me about the world who's learned the lesson what was the lesson because i feel the same lesson was learned by all hmm. 
Here we go. It's time to talk. That's what you learned. That you never want to be disconnected, this disconnected from this person again. You never should have put them out in the cold. And I'm looking at both of you, Empress and Emperor. I'm looking at both of you because it's a it's it's a thing that's created by two people, right? The silence is created by two people, but I think that that is about to come to an end. One is about to connect with the other to let them know that it's time for the silence to come to an end. So and the disconnection and feeling in lack, feeling like there was really nothing going on here. The truth is is that if you're waiting on an emperor, or waiting for an empress, this is your reading, I think. <laughs> it is general nonetheless. There we go. We got the judgment card on the table now. Wow, y'all. This is this is going to be wacky for some of you. I'm just going to say <laughs> straight up wacky because we now have the judgment card in play. So for for most of you, well, for anybody who's going to experience this energy and then in, at the end of this month, this is someone you know. This is someone that the universe is sending back for a second chance. You thought it was dead and done, but no, no, no. Here comes the judgment to resurrect everything. And it is the happiest time of your life. Look at all this happiness. Look at that. Yeah. Music and dancing. The judgment card is um, for me, Pisces and Virgo. Uh, we have Scorpio here as well. Wow. So it's not over. You thought it was the end because it was quiet, Five of Pentacles. That's why you thought it was the end. But it's not the end. It's actually just the beginning because what has to end for something to begin, right? Everything. We have the Devil card. So I feel both of you have closed a toxic cycle. Yep. You've closed the chapter on toxicity, being scared, feeling like not enough. You know, all of those things that make you feel in lack, that make you ghost someone, that make you cut away other people. I feel like some of you could have cut away a Capricorn, but it doesn't have to be. This is the, um, the devil card, so it is uh, connected to Capricorn. I feel like it, it really is, you've both slammed the door on toxic relationships. And that tells me that you two know how to treat each other because you've been through this toxic relationship. So tell me about, uh, I, I see the hanged man here. It's not lost on me that someone here is um, in a knowing. Yeah, I think it's the Empress because she is very connected to Source, right? Um, I feel like that there is the, that the Empress is willing to sacrifice Whatever it is she needs to sacrifice in order to be with this emperor, that's what I feel. It feels like a real pull toward the emperor. I feel like she's been manifesting, but the emperor is now coming in, which is creating a back and forth pull. It's creating yin and yang now, right? It's back and forth, back and forth. And I feel for some of you, um, that's going to come to fruition probably around the end of the month or maybe even into the first week of May. Because there's still more things to deal with us and to deal with in May, like retrograde. <laughs> So, you know, I feel like the universe is throwing everything possible at you and the emperor in order to make you move. So the emperor is in love with you and wants to have a new start. This is the, um, we've got the page of pentacles here. And there's the reunion, right? This person wants you on their team. They see you as someone who who can do heavy lifting, someone who can be their partner in a partnership. So for some of you, um, you've been waiting on this person because they're not only going to be your love, but they're also going to be your business partner. These two people have the smarts to be in business, right? And he is in business. The emperor runs the empire. So um, I feel as though there's nothing but incredible happiness here. Ten of cups, y'all. Yeah, I feel like for those of you who have been waiting, Emperor and Empress, to come together, this is so significant. I feel the energy like crazy. I wish we could have feel a vision. <laughs> I wish you could feel what I'm feeling. It's crazy. It's like you lost your favorite pet and they finally came back. I'm not equating either one of these to animals. I'm not. But you know the feeling. I'm trying to express what the energy is. You would know the feeling of if you lost your pet and then they came back. That's the feeling. That's all that, all those feels. I feel like the emperor and the empress have families because when I see the ten of moons, the ten of cups to me, um, it feels like 
um, energy that is being pulled together from many places. And um, the, the apex of happiness is that there's balance here. Yeah. These two have been through a lot and they know the balance now. Yeah. They learned a lot of lessons. We have the seven of pentacles and the three of pentacles here, which is the ten. That's the long-term relationship. That's the abundance. That's the overabundance. And I believe each to their own right are bringing a piece of that abundance because this empress is at the top of her game. The emperor is at the top of his game, right? This is, this is two people who are going to make a lot of good in the world together. If they stay in the upright, they're going to make a lot of good. So we have the ten. We have the ten of... Um, pentacles here in the seven and the three. I feel that the emperor's picking up what you're dropping, Empress, and um, I feel like the wait is going to be over. And we are, the result is, we are going to have the ten of moons. Y'all, I don't even gotta clarify. I think we're done. <laughs> There's no clarif- Oh, come on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Love, happiness, secrets. Somebody's been lying to you. Yeah, the emperor hasn't been showing much affection, but the emperor is way in love with you. This kind of love. The kind where two families come together, blend, and are together forever. That's a forever family. Yeah. It's been hiding in the dark and you haven't seen the love that's coming. And that's what's creeping up on you. If you're feeling feeling the sneak up energy. Yeah. It's been love. The two of, the two of wands. It's time to go. Time to go right now, Empress. Okay. You know what? I can't even. I can't even with the tarot today, y'all. <laughs> I'm just going to end this reading. I hope you enjoyed it. It was amazeballs, really. <laughs> the way these cards all fall out. I, every single day I'm taught something new and it teaches me that I'm not the one in control of this. This truly is universal energy. This truly is spirit energy. I'm going to go for now. I'm very humbled. I'm humbled you stopped to watch. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.